So if you hadn't heard about the NFL's new proposal to incentivize minority hirings as coaches, as general managers, don't worry. Today will be your chance to listen to it. I'm Nick Dwyer here with the 10th inning. And in this video, I will be presenting you with all the facts that you need to know about this proposal for incentivizing minority head coach, general manager hires. If you all enjoy this video, leave a like down on it, comment on it. I'm sure there will be a lot to discuss because this is a pretty divisive topic right here. We have people who are 100% in favor of it. We have people who are not in favor of it whatsoever. And we have people who are kind of right in the middle. I will be giving you my opinion of this whole thing at the end, but I just want to get everything that you need to know out there, first of all. So I'll basically be reading the article down, just putting up the most important points right there on the screen. So to start off, during his State of the League address three months ago at the Super Bowl in Miami, Commissioner Roger Goodell acknowledged a need to increase the opportunities for minorities to become head coaches and general managers. Clearly, we are not where we want to be on this level, he said. It's clear we need to change. We have already begun discussing those changes, what stages we can take next to determine better outcomes. The first would be to remove the long-standing anti-tampering barrier that permits clubs to block assistant coaches from interviewing for coordinator positions with other clubs, even though having coordinator experience is typically the final and most significant step in becoming a head coach. The other would be to incentivize the hiring of minorities as head coaches or primary football executives by rewarding teams with improved draft slots. So there's two parts to this whole thing. The one really everyone's been talking about is the incentives for hiring the minority candidates. Oh, well, you'll be getting more draft picks. No, that's only a part of it. Granted, that's a big part of this, but that's only a part of it. The first part is they want to remove the long-standing barrier where you can't interview an assistant coach for a coordinator position for another team. That's another part of this, but another part that people just seem to be glossing over. If a team hires a minority head coach, that team in the draft preceding the coach's second season would move up six spots from where it is slotted to pick in the third round. So that's the key. That's the big key right there in that. The coach needs to be there for at least two full seasons in order for any of this to take place. Moving on, a team would jump up 10 spots under the same scenario for hiring a person of color as its primary football executive, otherwise known as general manager. If a team were to fill both positions with diverse candidates in the same year, the team could jump up 16 spots, 6 for the coach, 10 for the GM, and potentially move from the third round to the second round, depending on where they were slotted anyway at the beginning of the draft. Another incentive, a team's fourth round pick would climb five spots in the draft preceding the coach's or GM's third year if he is still with the team. Now, this is considered significant because Steve Wilkes and Vance Joseph, two of the four African-American head coaches hired since 2017, were fired after one and two seasons respectively. There's more I will go into with this. There's a lot more to present, but I just want to throw a little bit in right now. I am one who comes from the standpoint of you should never hire a coach for one season and if he doesn't perform well, fire him. Two seasons? Okay, that's one thing. You're giving him a little bit of a chance. But one season, that's not enough even if you were the worst team. That's not enough to bring the team back up. If you're the best team, that's not enough to do anything. I feel like head coaches, no matter what the situation, should never be hired and fired within the same year. In order to fully gauge how good a head coach will be with the specific team, you need at least two full seasons under the belt. One full season does nothing for you. So I can see where they're coming from, especially since two of the four African American head coaches since 2017, only lasted one, two seasons. I think that's wrong no matter what, but especially since there was only four African-American head coaches in that span, this definitely seems like a big need that the NFL needs to at least address. So going back in to more of the facts, in addition to coaching hires, only two of the 32 GM positions currently belong to someone of color. Alarming statistics considering 70% of head coach hires during the past three years come from two positions, quarterback coach 
and offensive coordinator. Under the proposed resolution, clubs would be prohibited from the end of the regular season to March 1st from denying an assistant coach the opportunity to interview with a new team for a bona fide coordinator position on offense, defense, or special teams. Any dispute about the legitimacy of the position would be heard by the commissioner and his determination would be final binding and not subject to further review. If a team, offense, defense, whatever it may be, wants to interview your assistant coach, you will ha you will no longer have the right to say no. You no longer have the right. That's what they're asking for right now. You would be allowed to do that. I'm perfectly fine with that. That makes a ton of sense to me. Then, if a minority assistant left to become a coordinator elsewhere, his former club were, would receive a fifth round comp pick. And if a person of color leaves to become a head coach or general manager, his previous team would receive a third round comp pick. One final provision. Any team that hires a person of color as its quarterback coach would receive a comp pick at the end of the fourth round if it retains that employee beyond one season this time. This provision is an attempt to get more diverse pool of coaches working with quarterbacks. The league is also looking at further enhancing the Rooney Rule by doubling the number of minority candidates a team must interview for head coach and vacancies. It also is expected to apply the rule to coordinator positions for the first time. So if you don't know what the Rooney Rule is, Quick recap on that, the Rooney Rule basically states when you're looking for a new head coach, it's mandatory to at least interview one person of color, one minority. Now, at the beginning, it looked like the Rooney Rule, I'll say, was pretty successful. You, do, you can't really gauge that though, but minorities were being hired at a rate never seen before in the NFL. But it seems to have slipped off a little bit. Is that because of the Rooney Rule? I don't know. Is that because of the owner's mindset? Because one one argument that I've really been seeing is the owners just have this mindset not to hire minorities. I don't know about that. This is the time I get into my opinion. Again, you don't have to agree with my opinion. Feel free not to. That's the joy of opinions. You should never fully agree with somebody else on a topic. You can agree with most of their points, but if you ever fully agree with a hundred percent of everything that someone else is saying either you're lying or they're lying because no one ever a hundred percent fully understands what you're saying fully agrees with you and that doesn't just have to be with sports that's with everything in the world so let's get into my opinion on all of this personally i don't think the second half of this is a good idea i don't think incentivizing teams to hire minority coaches is a good idea i think the first part of this proposition is excellent. I think you should be able to interview an assistant coach whenever you want. I think the anti-tampering of that, getting rid of that, would do wonders for this game and really help out, not necessarily just minority coaches, but coaches in general. Now, going into the, the race part of this, we look at incentivizing teams for hiring minority coaches. Now, I already talked about a little. I personally don't think that a coach should ever be fired after one season or really even two. I think it should be a three season minimum, at least a two season minimum, but I think three season minimum because you never truly get a gauge of how that head coach is going to work in your system. You could have the best head coach in the world, but if he doesn't fit the system, he doesn't fit the system. That's all that matters at that point because we've seen head coaches fail in one system and flourish in another system. That's the same for any head coach. It doesn't matter where you are. But getting further into this, we look at it. And you want to incentivize teams to hire minority coaches. Now, do I think more minority coaches and primary executives, GMs, should be in the league? Of course I do. But it's also based on one thing. Are they qualified for the job? Now, of course, the easy answer is, well, yes, they're qualified for the job. What kind of stupid question is that? Now, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that owners never, never hire a minority because they're just never the most qualified. Of course not. They have their preferences. Every single owner, every single person has their preferences when it comes to who they want to take, who they don't want to take. But incentivizing someone to take someone you don't necessarily want to take, that that just doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't make sense to me. Because how I look at this, if you are down to two candidates, one minority, 
one Caucasian candidate. And well, let's say it like this. They're close enough where you can't make an extreme decision. However, you think the Caucasian head coach would be just a little bit better to fit your system. But you know if you hire the minority coach and keep him for at least two seasons, you're getting a better draft pick because of that? The choice is easy for you. Of course you're going to pick the minority coach. No, that's not how it should be done. I'm not saying you have to pick the Caucasian coach either, but you have to look at it from, why are you incentivizing people to be hired? This, personally, I think this comes as a bad look for the NFL. You're basically putting a bounty on these guys' heads saying, hey, if you take him, you're getting a better draft pick. And you're going to have teams who take full advantage of this. And that's great. But what I mean when they're taking full advantage of this, they're going to hire the minority. But he's not going to play the role that he's hired to do. Obviously, there are people qualified every single race. That's not up for debate. Again, people have their preferences of who they're going to take. And I also think if you're going to fail, let someone fail on their own. If the choice is down between a minority head coach and a Caucasian head coach, and they end up going with a Caucasian head coach, and he ends up failing? Don't say, see, told you you should have hired the minority. No, blame the team for who they hired. Let's look at it as a, well, hey, this could have happened no matter who you took, but you took him. Don't say this wouldn't have happened with the minority, but take it as something like, okay, this gives me even more motivation to become a better head coach. Because when you look at it, minority head coaches, for the most part, have been very successful in the NFL. And why have they been very successful? Because there's a smaller number of them compared to the Caucasian. And then when you look at it, hey, they've had some of the greatest players on their teams. They've coached some of the greatest teams. Not saying that Caucasian coaches haven't coached some great teams. But with more Caucasian coaches in the league, of course you're going to get the bad, the bad coaches in there too because there are just so many more. So looking at, well, minorities are usually so much more successful than Caucasians. No, that doesn't work. But I just don't think you should incentivize someone for hiring a minority. Hire the best person for the job. Now, that's much easier said than done. Hire the best person for the job. Doesn't matter what race they are, doesn't matter what gender they are. Hire the best person for the job. It's just that simple. Now there are going to be people mad because I'm saying something that should be obvious to everyone out there. Hire the best person. We all know hiring the best person doesn't always work, doesn't always go the way we plan, and I'll say it, it pisses people off. It really gets under people's skin. Don't let it get under your skin, man. I know I'm coming from a position where maybe I haven't had to fight as hard as some other people in, in my life, I'll say, for certain opportunities that I've gotten. But don't let it get under your skin. That's how you let people know they've beaten you. And when you let people know they've beaten you, especially in this kind of profession, if you let people know they've beaten you, you may never be the same confident person that you once were. And that could really end up screwing you in the long run. So at the end of the day, I'm not going to sit here and say, well, this is a racist thing. No, this is actually anti-racism. Any of that, you'll see those arguments all online. I advise you to do some research on your own and come up, formulate your own opinion on this because again, you may agree with me at the core of what I'm saying, but I don't expect anyone out there to 100% agree with what I'm saying. I don't expect myself to agree with 100% of what anyone else is saying. You formulate your own opinion. Yes, you can you can agree with someone else's opinion. That doesn't mean you can you can also disagree with them on certain points of what they're saying. So again, take this all with a grain of salt. Educate yourself on this. Form your own opinion on this because I'm tired of just hearing people form their opinion on this and obviously you're allowed to do it. It's America. You're allowed to form your own opinion without having any background knowledge on the situation. You can do that in anything, but you might make yourself look like a fool. And hell, I may have made myself look like a fool on this. I don't know. I don't care. I really don't care. This is my opinion. I could obviously go deeper into this, but I'm not going to right now. Educate yourself. Form your own opinion. Let me know down in the comment section 
what you all think about this rule for Nick Dwyer and the 10th inning. See ya.